This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Thursday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we lead with news both China and the EU seem to be facing banking and debt pressures. Different of course but each challenging in its own way. But first in the US, mortgage applications edged slightly higher last week from the week before but were 30% lower than at the end of September and about the same week level as a year ago. Rising mortgage interest rates are holding them back, with the latest rise to 6.90% for the fourth week in a row, and the highest since early July. Trump and market expectations that the new administration policies will be inflationary is getting the blame for the higher interest rates. Yesterday we noted the bullish outlook for Walmart as part of a stronger American retail activity. But today we also need to note the downbeat assessments from another major retailer, Target. After the unexpected September dip, Japanese exports rose again in October, even if the rise of 3.1% from a year ago was less than the rises they had in 2024 to August. Imports rose too, but even more modestly, up 0.4%. And Taiwanese export orders remain very buoyant, up 4.9% in October from a year ago, and a rising pace. The rise was mainly driven by increased export orders for electronic products. And the Chinese central bank left its November loan prime rates unchanged at the new lower October levels of 3.1% for the one-year loan prime rate and 3.6% for the five-year. And chickens are coming home to roost for Chinese banks that went along with the emergency lending during the pandemic. A government-encouraged surge in lending designed to be a lifeline for small businesses during the pandemic has started to worry their banks as misappropriation has caused the loans to go bad at an increasing rate due to, in part, to China's stubborn real estate slump. The official response to the problem? To ease back on lending standards. And the Indonesian central bank reviewed its policy rate yesterday and left it unchanged at 6% as expected. Although they trimmed 25 basis points in mid-September, they haven't really started their easing cycle yet. Inflation there is running at a very low 1.7% and within their policy target ban, so they must be close. And a big factor for them is currency stability, and a high real interest rate is keeping their empire from depreciating at a faster rate. Global tensions, both trade and geopolitical tensions, are the main factors here. In its latest financial stability review, the ECB is warning that the combination of low growth and high debt is about to play out there with some severe economic stress. In Australia, employers there paid almost $104 billion in wages and salaries in the September month, up 6.3% from a year ago, and the first time it has exceeded $100 billion in any month. It is part of a longer trend and is up 14% from September 2022 levels. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now just on 4.41% and up two basis points from yesterday. And the price of gold will start today at $2,649 an ounce, up $26 from yesterday. But oil prices are little change, still just over $69 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is still just over $73 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at 58.7 US cents and back 30 basis points from this time yesterday. Against the Aussie were 10 basis points lower at 90.4 Australian cents. Against the Euro were unchanged at 55.8 Euro cents. That all means our trade weight index starts today at just over 68.5 and down 10 basis points from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $93,806 and up 1.6% from yesterday. Volatility of the past 24 hours has again been modest at plus or minus 1.9%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes, and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow.